Durant pull up jumper. Off the rim and in. Oh! And the Thunder win! Oh, come on, let's sing the Thunder song. Right. When, when you, you hear, hear the sound of thunder, thunder, don't you get too scared. Just grab your thunder buddy and say these magic words. Hello and welcome back to another edition of the Thunder Buddies podcast. Free agency edition. Free agency starts tonight at midnight. We're recording this on, well, Monday uh, around noon, so about 12 hours away. I have Darno Mayberry in the building with me. And then uh, we got the salary cap expert, John Hamm. Thanks for having me back, guys. Yeah, no problem. Is this number two or three? Or? This is number two. Number okay. two. Thanks for having me back after the first one. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I I think we kind of, before we get into who the Thunder could possibly get in free agency, this or that, I think we need to know what can they realistically do? Because, you know, there's still people out there, you know, LeBron, Chandler Parsons, Lance Stevenson. Uh, let's, what can they realistically do in this free agency period as far as money-wise, financially, if they want to go over the salary cap, how far can they, this right. and that? So as it stands right now, they're over the salary cap, which, mm-hmm. you know, that that's no crime. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of teams live above the salary cap. When you're above the salary cap, you know, your options, you're, you're restricted in how you can sign free agents. Uh, so they have what's called the mid-level exception. There's a couple of different flavors of that. We could talk about that a little bit. Um, that's an option to sign one or more free agents. Um, they do still have a trade exception. It's been talked about quite a bit uh, from the Kevin Martin trade last year. That one uh, that would allow them to send out next to nothing and bring back a guy making up to six point six million dollars. So those are a couple of the tools that, they that have. That would be separate from from any kind of mid level exception right. usage, right? So you yes. could do that, and then you could also mid level exception. But that's only if you're willing to go kind of deep into the if you're willing to spend it up right yeah as it stands right now um yeah i think uh, their payrolls around 72 million we're estimating and that's accounting for the first round draft picks the two first rounders that they've got they've got a couple of guys on non-guaranteed deals that's about two million worth of wiggle room right there if we assume the luxury tax line is 77 million Mm -hmm. you know then that's that's where they said right now about five to seven below the tax line okay all right i Let's just get right to it because I think this is really interesting. The L.A. Times reporting Pau Gasol might meet with the Thunder. How realistic financially? I mean, would Pau have to take a huge pay cut, or can they work it with a? You mentioned maybe something about a sign and trade uh, to to get him around in, on that exception. Is that right. what you'd have to do? That, that's one way to do it. Yeah, uh, potentially. If if Pau Gasol's in the mood to take six point six million on a, on a short deal, you know, uh, if you do a sign and trade, you've got to sign him for at least three years. Okay. Now, Years two and three could be non-guaranteed, or they could be partially guaranteed, uh, but it does have to be a three-year deal. Um, so I mean, that's potentially an option. You know, the Lakers are, you know, they they've dumped a bunch of cap room. They think they're going to do something, or I kind of think it's going to be a transition year for them. I think they're just going to patch things together until next year, and then try to hit the free agent market again. So that's one option that they could do. Um, the mid-level exception that I mentioned earlier. Um, there's a couple of flavors. So. Um, this requires a little bit of history here. So uh, the NBA back in 99 put in a luxury tax structure because they wanted to try to curb teams from spending so much. And it was a dollar-for-dollar dollar tax over a certain line. And they, they revised it in 2005, and you had teams that just plowed through it anyway. It was just an inconvenience, but they just paid it. In 2011, they made the luxury taxes stiffer. And they introduced the concept of a repeater tax, but then they said the only way we're really going to impact these teams is if we curb their ability to acquire players. So luxury tax paying teams, if you're $4 million above the luxury tax, you cannot get a player through sign and trade. You cannot use what we call the full mid-level exception that allows you to sign a guy for up to four years, starting at, I think, $5.3 million yeah. this season. You cannot use a smaller exception called the biannual exception. It's a two-year contract worth a little over $2 million. You cannot do that. If you're under the tax line, you can use those exceptions, but you are capped at that same $4 million above the luxury tax. I mention all this because if Oklahoma City were to, you know, acquire a player through sign and trade, be it Pau Gasol or someone else, they would hard cap themselves for a season. Now, there there's enough room there for it to work, but Sam Presti loves flexibility. We yeah. hear him talk about it a lot. And so it'd be it'd be unusual. Now maybe he would do it if it was if it was just a no brainer. Maybe he would for go a guy for like it. Pau Gasol, I mean what that might be the guy to do it for. 
How much do you think he'd fit? Because, look, I mean, he'd be coming into a front court where, you know, where's he going to start? He's not starting at the four with a surge. He could start at the center, but then you got the whole perk issue, and then you got maybe – are you stunting the growth of Steven Adams? Right. Uh, you just brought in Mitch McGarry. You have Nick Collison. Perry Jones is still sitting there. Can you amnesty perk? Uh, that's that's potentially an option, too, if they were to go that If you that get route. Pow, and then you can amnesty. When's the, li- when's the date you can't amnesty? Uh, I want to say it's – the first six days after <clears throat> the moratorium, right? Yeah, I think so. I think it's the tenth through the sixteenth. The first seven days. Yeah, 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 I think so. Yeah, there's, so there's like, like mid July. They they could potentially you know agree to somebody and then make that decision if they're yeah. if they're going to do that or not. Yeah, July tenth through the sixteenth. I think that yeah. would maybe be the interesting move. You secure Pow, you maybe amnesty Perk. I mean, I understand the whole defensive thing, but if you could have a Pow start net center and then Adams coming off the bench. I love that move, if if possible. I don't know how possible it is, but what do you think if you could bring Powell in? I think you're, and people are going to laugh, but I think you take a step back defensively. You know, Powell Gasol how is much, not the same defender imagine if that he used to be. Yeah. And he would never for really all his learn. faults, Kendrick Perkins is going to play better post-defense than Powell Gasol. Um, so I think Perk gives you more of what you need in terms of defensively, but Powell obviously – is a much better offensive player. I imagine how skilled your front court would be with Durant, Abaca, and Pau Gasol. Silly. Yep. He would. But. He would. I mean, the passing issues might you know go away. He's a great passer for a big guy. And then you still got Stephen Adams off the bench. You know, we need post defense. We need. You know, he's not obviously perk as far as smarts, but he can come and bang around six fouls, energy. I like to move. I don't know how possible it is, but I don't know if Pau can hit threes. That's what I'm worried about. That's what I'm worried about the most right now is is spacing. The shooter? Well, I mean, how about this? Pow, you get him for the – you think he'd go mid-level? See, the thing is, supposedly – He'd have to take a pay cut. New, New York is supposedly interested in him as well. You know, he wants. He's got to want to win, though. You know what I'm saying? You you would think in, in New York. I mean, the, their best offer, Oklahoma City, would be able to trump it one yeah. way or another. Uh, so it would come down to: Do you want to go with Phil Jackson, live in New York, or do you want to take one more shot at a title? Um, I remember him like tweeting during the Memphis. I mean, obviously he's watching his brother, but he's tweeting like, oh, "I love how Memphis and Oklahoma City play," and I love you know. And it, I think he likes how the Thunder play. I think he knows Serge Ibaka. I think he respects the organization. That's right. I mean, there is He's a always connection complimentary. There. The Spanish national yeah. team. We got to back up for a second, John. Okay, now, let's say the Thunder is able to sign and trade for him. Yes. What would the Thunder, they have the exception, obviously, but what else would the Thunder have to give the Lakers to make them want to do that? Again, it comes down to you, they could trade the rights to a draft pick that's never going to come to the NBA. They, you, you can trade something as little as that. So would the or, Lakers' uh, incentive be basically doing it for almost nothing it, so they can keep their cap space and exactly. go after LeBron or Carmelo or right. Bosch or whoever? Or Powell's not going to be – he's done in our plans going forward, so we're going to do him a solid and you know we'll agree to do a sign and trade here and give them some flexibility. Okay. Yeah, that's – it's interesting. If they got Powell – could they also maybe get a shooter like a two guard, like a you know Mike Miller, who I mentioned multiple multiple times. On the front times. page of the Oklahoma Sports section today. Yeah, they, I, the right had, fit it says. They I, had me design. I believe you wrote the headline. And yeah, I wrote the, the I wrote the headline. I just didn't put the question mark at the end of right fit. You put <laughs> they, a, you put two added, exclamations and they, yeah. they changed it. You got edited. Yeah, I got a little edited, but it's all right. Um, I, could, I mean, what could you do then? Would you have to have Pau go? Or I guess Powell could do sound and trade, then you can get Mike Miller for mid level. Yeah, it, man, this this stuff gets it's real fluid because, like yeah. I say, that the main thing you would have to worry about in a sign and trade is that you would be hard capping yourself at an eighty one million dollar payroll, and by hard capped, I mean hard capped. I mean like NFL style. You can't sign guys to minimum salaries to go over that. You cannot cross that line yeah. at all. And that's. Not just for this year, that's for... No, that's just until June 30th. That's okay. just for the year. Oh, okay. Yeah, you are committing yourself to paying only you know $4 million, whatever that calculation turns out to be, mm-hmm. in, in luxury tax. Um, so that would be the only complication then is, yeah, they could, if, if the numbers work, use the full mid-level exception to bring in someone else, or they could use the smaller, what they call the taxpayer uh, minimum level ex- or mid level exception, which is a three year deal starting a little over three million, you could use that as well. You could use that little biannual exception for someone like Mike Miller, who's still getting paid by Miami next season. Yeah, that's potentially an option as well. Hmm. I like 
maybe pow at the mid-level exception if he takes it. And zero idea if he'd be willing to take it. And then you use the trade exception to go to Chicago, Mike Dunleavy. He's making three mil in Chicago, and Chicago's reportedly, I mean, we all, we already kind of knew this, but they're trying to dump deals to get Carmelo or LeBron or somebody free agent-wise. How about that? Is this where Darnell mentions the Congo death grip? Yeah, I don't think Serge likes him much. <laughs> I, if he starts dropping some threes out there, Serge will start to like him a little bit more. Man, I, I was on the Dunleavy bandwagon last year because you know, Chicago was trying desperately to avoid the luxury tax last season, and they succeeded. Mm-hmm. And they kind of had to uh, – they went to great lengths to do that. And so I was on the Dunleavy bandwagon last year, and uh, you know it didn't come through for one reason or another. Um, uh, Dunleavy is a guy that that I like. The only thing that you know he doesn't have a whole lot of playoff experience. And if you look at the veterans that Sam has brought in in the past, they've been you know grizzled playoff veterans. Some of them usually with rings or multiple mm-hmm. rings. So in that aspect, he doesn't fit that mold. But as far as from you know defensive and three point shooting ability, it, it potentially makes sense. Yeah. All right, I got a question. We Slater, talk- how much how much of this team's money are you trying to spend, man? You said you want Gasol, you want Dunleavy. You Those are the Mike two. Miller. Those are well. I mean, I'd rather, I'd rather take Miller, but you know, if uh, if somehow the dream scenario doesn't work out, and Carmelo's still out there, so we can't discount that. Uh, yeah, and LeBron could maybe. Troy Weaver him. recruited him to kidding. Syracuse, right? I mean, there's a connection. He has some kind of connection with Carmelo at Syracuse. We can't discount this, guys. Yeah, <laughs> Lance Stevenson too. Um, <laughs> all right. Okay, you you talk about me trying to spend money. If you bring Powell in for whatever mid level, and then you amnesty Perk. Where are you money financially? Yeah, I mean, are no, you in a better situation? No, that helps out a lot. You have to amnesty perk. There's no way that you I, do all of that without amnesty. You I, can, if you bring in Powell, I, and don't you think? Hold on, I got a question for you. If you bring in Powell, do you think the right move would be to amnesty perk? And I don't mean yeah, financial. Yeah, I think. I mean, well, you can't avoid the financial aspect of it. I don't think. I mean, we have yeah. John sitting here. I don't. Yeah. Think, I don't think they go like you can't separate the yeah, two. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and I still find that unlikely that they would use the amnesty on it. You know, mm-hmm. even though this is kind of a somewhat far fetched scenario we're talking about here, <laughs> it is pretty. Far-fetched. You know, I, I, I that's still, what people want to hear. Far fetched scenario. It's a man. podcast. It sells, it's a man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. Trade rumors. All this headlines going to be Pal Gasol coming OKC <laughs> <laughs> potentially. I still think if they made the decision that we're going to sever ties with Kendrick Perkins, I still think a trade is more likely. Yeah, you've got you've got Utah, you've got Philadelphia sitting out there that are tens of millions underneath the salary cap. Yeah. They're going to have to hit the salary floor. They've got to spend at least 90% of their salary cap. You know, it, there's the potential to move his contract onto one of those teams and throw in, you know, uh, the rights to a draft pick or a future draft pick or something and and let some other team absorb that rather than pay him off. Hey, don't forget about Miami, according to our man Chris Broussard. Yes. Pat Riley's going to make a run at Kendrick Not Perkins. Not nine mil. They could, I kind of understand, like, I could see Miami loving him at, you know, a vet minimum, a two mil amnesty he, candidate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they amnesty him, then maybe he signs minimum to go play in Miami because you know he's going to want to play for a title team. But they can't. They can't spend. They don't have nine million to spend on it, right? And even even the fit, yeah, like I that. think, is even kind of questionable because yeah, they're up know. and down when they're their best. They're they're spreading it out with LeBron. They're not. But you know what? I mean, it does make some sense. I and mean, when you look at how they got kind of manhandled against. The Pacers on well, the sure. inside. I think, they'd love, them at a, a I think they'd love them at a vet minimum, but if you're giving them nine mil, that's what they're talking about giving like no, Kyle they're, Lowry they're or definitely somebody. Not like giving a them star. Nine mil. But if they could get a Kendrick Perkins for a good contract, I think he could help Miami because Spolstra's not going to use him too much. You know, he's going to no, play no. him strategically, and he's not going to play him 25, 30 minutes a game. He's going to play him when he needs him. But so I mean, that's obviously far fetched. It's not going to happen. If they amnesty. But anyway, you want to just start throwing some free agent names out there? Go ahead. Okay. C.J. Miles is the guy you love. It's my guy. I'm with you. I mean, he's a great fit. I think he so. He can shoot it. He can defend. He's got length. He's athletic a little bit. He's not overly athletic, but he's he's got some good athleticism. Um, I like him. He's only 27 years old. You can probably get him for $3 million. I would think so. Maybe not much more than that. So, you know, he's a guy, we talked about the history with Troy Weaver. He had him out in Utah. Mm-hmm. Um, Sam Presti made a run at him in 2008 with that offer sheet as a restricted free agent. Utah matched. He stayed with the Jazz. I think it makes a lot of sense. It Kind of something I've always wondered here. You're right. Back in 2008, they threw an offer sheet on C.J. Miles, and Utah matched. 
Ever wonder what would have happened had they not matched that? What was what what was the exact signage? I think it was thirteen point eight. Yeah, but it was it was a four year deal. Was, four, four year, fourteen million ish. But because Utah matched that offer, Oklahoma City kept their mid level exception, signed Nanad Kerstich. Yeah, desperately needed at the desperately time. Desperately needed. The way. Yeah. But then, if they had kept, if they got CJ Miles, the Tabo trade doesn't happen. Right. And then, what yeah. do you do about the center position? Does it open up to where you get a chance to trade for Tyson Chandler, and you go ahead and and take that risk? Despite what the doctors say, I've just always found it fascinating. You're what could have happened? A little bit of Bill Simmons on us. Oh all no! Of a oh no! I'm Don't checking say out. That to I'm him. sorry. Don't say that to it's him. been wonderful, guys. <laughs> I'm checking out. <laughs> no, I mean it's interesting. It's interesting, that is the, interesting. how the dominoes. Boo, yeah. Boo, 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 boo. Yeah. How this team's no been doubt. built is kind of interesting. All right. You want some more just random names? Jared Bayless is unrestricted free agent. They need a. I'm just going down alphabetically. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Well, I mean to names that intrigue me. I'm not saying Shane Battier. He's gone. So. Okay, so if you're going alphabetically, the next name, and here's a guy that I'm intrigued by. Uh, I hope you, what your thing is what I'm thinking. Avery Bradley. <laughs> okay, no, I, I, was, I had a guy before Avery Bradley, but go ahead. John, what are your thoughts on He's Avery Bradley? He's restricted. He's restricted, so you would need to do sort of that sign and trade or just hope that they wouldn't match whatever you threw at him. Right, it. right. I love Avery Bradley, but he's six foot two. Yeah. And on the last podcast, you talked about how they love guys with they length. They got to have length. Yep. Yep. This guy's six defender. foot two. He's he's an excellent defender. And last season, I think he shot thirty nine percent from three. Which so is hey, I'll take those two 30, things. Avery Bradley shot thirty nine percent from I'll three last year. Fact check him. I'll fact check him. Fact check me on that, but I'm almost going. positive this is what I saw this morning. Okay, but from a financial standpoint, yeah. how would they be able to get? Avery Bradley. Yeah, like you said, either you you would have to throw down an offer sheet, probably the the four year uh, mid level exception starting at five point three, mm. and just hope Boston doesn't match. Yeah. Hope that Boston's going to tie up their you know cap space doing something else, or go and negotiate a sign and trade. And uh, but that one, I don't think it would be like we talked about Pau Gasol earlier, where you're, you know they're doing Pau a favor. This would be conveying something of value. They would want something. For they would him. want yeah. something yeah. in exchange for that. So now we got to talk about. You know, are you sacrificing, you know, Jeremy Lamb? Are you sacrificing Perry Jones, Andre Robers- Robertson, something like that? Well, you just got Houston. Feels like Robertson's expendable. Who's this? Do you, you come around <laughs> on your boy Houston? Well, I like his personal story. Yeah, it was but, awesome. But I don't know. Oh, Avery Bradley, thirty nine point five percent, seventy nine of two hundred from three last year. Makes yeah. it, makes him a little more. Interesting. When did he learn how to shoot? Last year, I guess, because he only shot 31% the year before. Brad Stevens. Wow. 40 of 126. Brad Stevens is in the water up in Boston, apparently. Maybe Marcus Smart will be able to shoot it yeah, in the I next mean, couple of years. That's, the, that's what know, makes him kind of maybe expendable, I think, is the smart pick. You, you would and think James that Young. Bradley or Rondo or maybe both would be expendable, considering the draft they just had. Yeah. All right. The guy that was between Bayless and uh, Bradley, Michael Beasley. <laughs> Any interest? I don't think the Thunder next. works. Next. <laughs> next. I think it would be interesting. For that's, who? That's th- a word for it. Yeah, interesting is a, it's Ex- a great word. Well, I, I enjoy interesting things. Oh, my God. For the Thunder? Well, I don't know. I'm not saying they're going to, but I would be very intrigued by it. I, I, I cannot believe back in 2008, I seriously thought Michael Beasley should have went number one to Chicago. I can't believe I once upon a time thought that. Well, I wouldn't blame you because he was amazing He was at amazing K-State. at K-State. He had... He had the same numbers, maybe honestly, even better than Durant's numbers the year before. Uh, I mean, he was putting up some like forty twenty games, and as he a dominated. Freshman. Well, dominate. He 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 got the better of Blake Griffin. Yeah, you know that year, and he, he was so good. He, they beat KU for the first time in a long time. Yeah, I mean, he was incredible that season. So, a lot of people were in the same boat as you. Yeah, uh, he 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 might want to learn to speak another language. Yeah, yeah. Somebody will give him a contract. He's got he's skilled offensively. I mean, I, he comes with about as much baggage as you can. Yeah, he's got about as much focus as my five year old daughter, though. Man, he's. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh man, I can't believe we wasted that much time on that. <laughs> I think it's interesting. Okay, Elton Brand. Nah, nah. they nah. don't need a big. You think they're just going perimeter guys? Except unless it's a guy like Powell. Yeah, I, I I don't see where where the center power four positions yeah, are it, that big of a need. I mean, I I could not, see a stretch the, four. Yeah. Again, if a Ryan Anderson's going to fall out of the sky, yeah, sign me up. But other than that, I'm I'm thinking perimeter. I don't know about you yeah, guys. Yeah, the Mitch McGarry pick I think kind of yeah. ruined their efforts. Maybe not their efforts, but I think, I think, I think any up, chance yeah. of them going out and getting another big, unless yeah. it's a guy like Powell. 
<laughs> yeah, I think that's right. far fetched. Okay, Vince Carter. That's intriguing. Thirty-seven years old. He is thirty-seven, but he's he can shoot it. He can shoot, and if you look at his advanced stats, you know it, the the real plus minus stuff that is a little bit of controversial. He is fantastic. Yeah, as far, in terms of defensive numbers on on real plus minus. So the defense is still there. The shooting is still there. 37 years old. He can get hot, man. He can get real hot. I mean, Derek Fisher essentially got a three-year deal with OKC, so why not give <laughs> give Vince a three-year deal? Come on. And he's – I mean, he's aged a lot better than people Absolutely. probably thought he would. I mean, he was good for Dallas last year, a, you know, a good Dallas team. I, I wouldn't re- be opposed to it, but I, what kind of deal would you bring him to town on? That one, again, I, I, I'm thinking that's the smaller – mid-level exception type deal i mean like yeah. like three million or less I, I think he made about that much with dallas last season if i'm not yeah. mistaken um yeah, i don't think he's looking for a big payday i think he's just looking to win but i also don't think that he's quite veteran minimum type yeah material he's a little yet. bit better yeah so i it would seem like he would fit somewhere along in those lines mm-hmm. i think he's a secondary option if some other stuff doesn't go through i I think he'd be an intriguing guy. Who's the next name on your list? I'm I'm curious. I'm like like I said, I'm just going down. I'm literally have every free agent in front of me right now and I'm going down and just naming the names that intrigue me. Restricted free agent Jordan Crawford. Mm-mm. No. He can shoot it, but not much else. I think there's some uh uh behavioral type or I, I don't know if he's necessarily a bad apple, but uh quirky. Yeah. 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 A little bit. All right, how about this one? <laughs> Big baby. That's your boy, <laughs> big fan. I'm just kidding. They don't need a big. We've talked about it. Any shot? What's Lou Dang's just gonna command way too much, huh? Yeah. So uh, it, there was reports this morning that Atlanta's interested in him and for like ten million, years. ten to twelve, something yeah. like that. And yeah, and so you know, in that scenario, you're talking about creating a package around Perkins, and uh, Cleveland doesn't have a lot of need for that right now. You could expand that to a three or four team deal, but that starts to fall apart pretty quickly, I think. Boris Diaw. I love Boris. Probably not leaving San Antonio. Probably not. I'd be shocked. Probably not. But if, I love Boris. But if he was to leave San Antonio, it would probably be for a place like here. I would think. Um, well, they got Derek Fisher listed on here. He's not exactly a oh, he'll be back. anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, they'll, they'll get him back at some point. Okay, he's going to love this one. Francisco Garcia. Sign me up. <laughs> 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 hey, three and D, baby, three and D. Uh, and you could, cheap. Well, you could get yeah, cheap is what makes him interesting. He can he can defend. He wouldn't be my first three choices, but he can defend. If you strike out, I'd call Francisco Garcia. You tell me, could, could he and KD bury the hatchet pretty quickly? Yeah. Okay. Like KD is a friendly guy. Like he's not. He's not Serge Ibaka kind of just gripping people out there. He's just cussing them out and moving on. If Francisco's on your side and he's playing that type of defense, Durant will start to like him. That's you don't right. got to face him. You don't have to face him, and he oh, covers practice. for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Would you prefer Francisco Garcia over Danny Granger is another guy that's close on this list? I would, over Danny I would. Granger? Yeah, 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 I would too. I think Granger might be done. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't look too good in the playoffs no, last year. No, no, he looked brutal. Um... Spencer Hawes. I mean, another big guy, but... John perked up. I perked up. He was because of the stretch p- factor? Yeah, the stretch factor. I I, I kind of looked at him a little bit. What do you um, think he commands? Uh, so so that one, I think he made around 6.6 with Cleveland last year, Cleveland mm-hmm. and Philly. So he would have to come in probably on, on that sign in, trade. in the trade exception. Yeah, tr- trade, um, yeah. I love the stretch possibility. I love the top of the, you know, top of the key, pick and roll possibility. That, there. He, he doesn't shoot from the corners. He shoots top of the key, kind of out to the arc, but still intriguing. It's it's an intriguing Surges concept, in but you know, again, he would be kind of a backup four or five. He he might be another guy that if he, they did that move would probably mean a perk amnesty. More than likely, more than likely, but I'm not banking on it. No, I'm not either. But it's, it's you also it. have the Seattle factor. <laughs> you know, he's Mister Seattle. He yeah, came to yeah, town yeah, one time yeah, wearing yeah. a space needle tie, like to send a message. <laughs> To the ownership, yeah. the team that they robbed his team, or whatever That's you want true. to call it. So, I'm not sure he'd be the best fit, just because I think he's got some animosity toward he this might. franchise. He would fit in politically in this state, though. Yes, he would. He's outspoken. Yes, he is. He is an outspoken <laughs> oh, yeah. player. That is true. <laughs> All right, 
Um, you put him on your on your thing you did in the paper today, which I couldn't believe you put him this high on one of your lists. But Chris Humphreys, Chris Humphreys, where'd I have him? I had him the fourth tier. What I mean, what do you, what do you mean? What do you mean? That's not that high for Chris Humphreys. I wouldn't have had him on a tier. Oh, I, I mean, wouldn't that make him one of the top? How many did you do? Like 25? I did twenty five, and then he other the guys is like bargains. Years. Chris Humphreys is not a top twenty five. I think he's a good player. I mean, I okay, put it this way: who's a who do you think's a better player, Chris Humphreys or a Big Baby? I mean, I don't think Big Baby's a top 25 free agent, but I still might say Big Baby. Mm. I think he'd, he's better on a title team. If you're a title team, I'd rather have Big Baby. Yeah, I, I mean, d- different skill sets. Humphreys is, is, is a fantastic rebounder. Uh, Big Baby, I, I was surprised at how quick on his feet he looked mm-hmm. in that Clippers series. I mean, he's got some more offensive moves. Um, I'd probably push on that one. But, yeah, yeah, but neither are top 25. I mean, Chris Humphreys, I think, is an underrated player. Yeah. I'm, I'm not like high him. on him, but I mean, yeah. I, I think he's always been an underrated player. I think he'll help Excellent the team. rebounder and, yeah. you know, scores around the basket. So he might not be a top 25 player. It's debatable. Okay. Rashard Lewis. Next. Pass. All right. He was good in the finals, but I agree. Uh, Sean Livingston probably, lo- you think he'll go a little. For a little bit too much, yeah. That's that's what it sounds like. There's there's a lot and of and he teams. probably wants more of a role. Probably wants be... more of a role. Yeah, and, and it seems like he's kind of settled in as like a point guard. You know, when he was here in Oklahoma mm-hmm. City, he was kind of a one two three kind yeah, of. People a... don't remember that that well, but yeah, he was. Yeah, that brief stint here into this organization a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, not Kyle Lowry way too much. Josh McRoberts, another big guy. Some I guess. people keep. Throwing his name out there to me, I'm like, why yeah. do you want Josh McRoberts? He's I don't actually get it. Yeah. He averaged like four or five assists last year. He's actually a very good passer. He can shoot it, and he can stretch out. He can stretch. I think I don't think the Thunder will get him because, like, as we've talked about multiple times, I don't think they're going to go after another big. But I think he's you know he's much better than Chris Humphreys. I'll say that. I think he's a much better scorer. Yeah, I, mean, I think he's a better player than Chris Humphreys. I think you'd rather have like Josh they're two McRoberts. different players though. Like I don't. You said it like, hey, it's... Okay, I got another one. I don't want to talk about hey, McRoberts hey, anymore. Hey, you keep throwing out these big... Talk about some shooting guards. Like, this uh, well, team guess needs what, guess a what, starting guess, shooting guard. Guess who's next? Jody Meeks. Here we go. Now we're talking. Small. He can shoot it. He can fill it up, but he's a little on the undersized sort of things. Um, doesn't give you much defense. I was going to say, what role would you have him in? I don't know that he can come in and be a starter. For I, this I team. don't think so. He's kind of Jeremy Lamb-ish. Yeah, just the style of play. Okay, not going to be able to get him, but Patty Mills. He, he can I've get always loved Patty. Mills. I have too. I mean, this is before. This is when he was waving a towel on the bench, and he would come in at the end of games, if at all. Like I've always loved Patty Mills, um, but I think he's. A backup. I don't think he's a third string. I think he's like a fringe starter. Well, that's the thing. I, I think if he's going to be a backup, he stays in San Antonio. If he's leaving, he's not going somewhere like Oklahoma City. He's going somewhere to start. Right. That's my thought. Yeah. So he's I don't coming here to be a third string. Yeah. He's either going yeah. somewhere to start or yet. Yeah. Just, if he's coming here, then I mean, if you assume Reggie Jackson's going to be the starting two guard, then maybe you could get talked into it. But yeah, I'm not convinced like that's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't agree. I mean, I do agree. Uh, okay, I got two M's here. Two who what? Would, two two guys with M last names. They're right next to each other on this list. Who would you rather have, Mike Miller, or Anthony Morrow? John, I think I've been over this like fifty million times. You have, you have, man. Man, heat lamps on me. Um, I love Mike Miller. the the thing The thing that separates the two, obviously, is the experience and the championship rings. Yeah. And the reputation. I, I love Moro as well, mm-hmm. and uh, I wouldn't mind having him on the team if you know if, if they get no one else in free agency. If they bring him in just to have him around, I'd be okay with that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he can shoot it. Mike Miller shot forty six percent from three last year and played all eighty two games. I wonder if that's an outlier though. That, A little. That screams like an outlier. The eighty two games part of it, not the forty six percent. No, no, though. that that could that could happen again. Um. I mean, if the, if I'm the Thunder, I'd prefer Mike Miller, but I think either'd be a good fit. Any any names you guys want to throw out? Nick Young. 
I mean, Mike Beasley then. <laughs> <laughs> people people been asking me about it. Someone said on Twitter, why not go after Nick Young? I said, because he's Nick Young. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, that, that was kind of your answer on Beasley. But so. then I'm looking at his stats. I'm like, this Oh, I mean, dude he gets buckets. Gets it in. He does. He no does. doubt. So if we're. And I don't if think. If you could control him, which is a huge if. Yeah. <laughs> He could slide in nicely at the two. He don't play defense. He doesn't but seem like he has like really like off court character issues. Nah, I mean, he's, he's goofy. Just, he's kind of yeah. you know he's just goofy. Yeah. but he's not like you know get in criminal words, record stuff like that. Can he can he take it seriously enough? Yeah, for a that title would, team, that would be the question. The guy that I have, he's not a free agent. Um, Randy Foy in Denver. Yeah, the guy can shoot. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's he's not starting two guard material in my yeah. opinion. He's small too. He is small. And he's not going to defend much, but he can shoot it. He can shoot it. That would be a trade exception type acquisition right there. What What's he making? L- a little over three, three million, I believe. Yeah, I mean, that's... Off the top of my head. Who else I got on this list? Let's see. Okay, I got a good one. Paul Pierce. I'm not saying good fit, but he's an intriguing name. What I'm wondering about Pierce... Uh, Brooklyn is is now in a bit of disarray. Yeah. And it seems like he's kind of hitched to Garnett. You know, indications are Garnett's coming back. So I kind of assumed if Garnett comes back, Pierce resigns for another year. If Garnett says I'm done, then Pierce goes to the Clippers. That's that's been kind of my hunch. Just cuz Rivers the Rivers connection. He's from LA and he's from LA. He be he would be an interesting guy to come in, veteran, kind of like a Karan Butler but more skilled offensively, start him at two, play a lot of Jeremy Lamb off the bench. I would actually really like that signing. Okay, yeah. here's another name. People are down on him. Evan Turner. Oh. See, uh, that's, that's, exactly, yeah. that's exactly the reaction that I'm I thought you might out. have. Evan yeah. Turner. He was actually kind of playing well in Philly before the trade, and then he well, went to Indiana. Because Philly and then, was like, somebody please score, like, <laughs> Just shoot. I don't know. Get points. I, who is he even out there with? Lavoy Allen. Cap space. He was out there with cap yeah. space. What is, James he's, Anderson he's was like. Okay, getting, he's restricted. So what is. They yeah, were letting well, James well, Anderson shoot 10 We feet. think he'll be restricted. He was, they, he was so bad in the playoffs that Indiana may not even tender him a qualifying yeah, offer. Yeah. He could be an unrestricted free well, agent. He stopped playing by the end. They were playing like Chris yeah. Copeland over him, and it was like the right move. Yeah. Okay, so why would you say no to Evan Turner? Not a shooter. I mean, he's made like out to 15, 16 feet. Yeah. Advanced metrics hate him. Mm-hmm. Not a, really a good defender, kind of slow, and he's never proven to be a very good locker room guy. There's stories of him. You know, he's not that friendly with teammates a lot of times. May not fit that, the culture. That's an inter- That's a great case. There you <laughs> go. It's a great case. I think he's talented. Uh, former number two overall pick. I'm not saying I'd go there, but if I could his, bring him in for cheap, I might think about it. His points are way too much like isolations. He needs to get yeah. his own points. He's and that's like not Joe coming Johnson on the Thunder. A little bit. Yeah. It, so that's not coming on the Thunder. I, I think he would have but guess zero what? fit here. But guess what? The guy everybody who always talks about who got traded, it's kind of in the same mold as Evan Turner. Harden? A little bit. Well, <laughs> not nearly the same sh- player. Yeah. Right? Don't get me wrong. But no having bit. the ball in his hands, yeah. creating – uh, a buffer between KD and Russ. I mean, now you have that with Reggie and Jeremy a little bit if they ever just let the guy go. But you know how I am on on Lamb. Yeah. But I am too. Welcome I am to too. the club, oh, man. Jeez, the two man. Darnell club. and I agree on a lot of things. Uh, l- let me. I agree with Darnell on a lot you of things. That's the best way to. You want me to leave quick? <laughs> hey, you want to start talking about Jamal Crawford or something? Or it's the Jeremy Lamb to. podcast. Jer- let's bring up Jamal Crawford and Stephen Adams. Get Slater back in here. All right. I've got another name to throw out. It's not a two guard, but it's a guy off the bench. What about Marvin Williams? Yeah. Uh, Speaking of number two overall picks. Yeah. People are kind of down. He's kind of has that had the Evan Turner career path where he was drafted so high and had a ton of expectations and just didn't meet him. Because now wasn't people, Chris Paul. people got so yeah. Because now people got so down on him. He actually has been decent the last couple of years. I don't know. How, I mean, the, he'd be in their price range too. He'd be a swing. He'd be a three-four. Yeah, kind of a tweener. But uh, that's a name that I looked at what earlier. Let me be a what party pooper for just a second here. I'm gonna oh, switch gears. Big surprise. Andre Robertson. What if he's your starting two guard next year? I wonder. 
it's po- I mean, it's very possible because I know they love having the defense out there with their stars at, at the tip. And you, we've talked about metrics here for a little bit. If we look at the metrics with Andre Robertson in the starting lineup um, and just on the court, like, they weren't bad with him. I mean, they yeah. were pretty good with him on the line on on the floor. I agree, but I, and I that's, think that if wasn't they strike as much out, him. Like, I think that well, you can say that about everyone with metrics. But if they strike out in free agency, or if their th- their guy isn't there, I think Andre might be the starting two guard next year. I do too, he, but he just needs. To, there just can't be those moments. I remember a couple times when you start, and I remember a, a Houston game. They swung it to him in the corner. And you just saw, I think they had James Harden on him, and James Harden just like backed up to the paint. And Robertson was like, Well, that's because ah. that's how James Harden plays defense. Yeah, well, that's, that's and, more about Harden than, <laughs> than Robertson. Well, no, no, I agree with that. But the thing is, he can do that because Robertson was like, Oh, no, I can't shoot. Right. And then he tried to like swing it back to Durant when he had a wide open three, and Chandler Parsons picked it off. Aren't they like reconstructing just, his shot? Yeah, it's, it's just he can like almost be poisoned to an offense. Here's what I've with been that, told with that about, lack of shot. Here's what I've been told about Andre Robertson. He's Tony Allen. You remember who really killed the Thunder in that Memphis series? Tony Allen. Tony Allen. And he can't shoot. Like, Tony Allen's getting cuts. Don't he's tell Tony Allen going. he can't shoot. He's getting back. <laughs> but he knows his strengths and his limitations. Right. Uh, well, he's, he not, he's not out there shooting threes. Like, if you back off he of him, sometimes. he's going to do something else. Yeah. He's going to get to the basket. At, at times. Score in transition. Score on back doors. Like, get offensive rebounds and putbacks. That's the type of player... That I think the Thunder looks at. I know the Thunder looks yeah. at Andre Robertson. As. I think he's. He, I think he, like you said, great cutter, great offensive rebounder, great defender. Does a lot of things well. I'm just saying, within this offense, the two guard probably needs to be able to shoot. We saw what, yeah, when we've Tavo, seen that with Tabo. With, when Tabo yeah. stopped shooting last year, it was just like it's so obvious. Yeah. Although what what really hurt, I felt, is when you had Tabo and Perk on the floor, and Tabo was ineffective. Yeah. That that is what was really. You know, hurtful. It didn't cripple them clearly because the second unit could come in and get them back into the game, get them back in and take the lead. But if we look at potentially putting Stephen Adams as a starting center next year, would you do that? I would. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll throw in a caveat. Though. Right, okay. Here Uh-oh. we go. I mean, because I think back to when to when uh, Perkins and Cephalosha were injured during that stretch, and the defense was bad. Mm-hmm. So if we assume Tabo's not going to be back. Do you also want to jettison your other defensive anchor out of the starting lineup as well going into next season? I see. I think Scott Brooks thinks like that, and and rightfully so. Yeah, it's just something well, you to know consider. what you need to do. Hey, Russell, play defense like you did. See, in that's the, the thing. Series. And let me. I'm going on a tangent here, Slater, <laughs> no, no. because I'm tired of get all of these. Up. Like, hey, we gotta have a defender. No, we gotta have we. I'm speaking as them. Yeah, we gotta have Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant defending. If Absolutely. they start defending, you don't have to talk about all these. We need a I'm defender in that spot. So yeah. I just had to throw that out there again. Yeah. I'm with you. Should we go to another free agent? How many you got? I don't know. I'm down to I'm down to the S's and one of them is Tabo. And I don't think he's coming back. Is uh, that the, is that the worst idea to bring back Tabo if like the contract is it just bare felt bones? it just felt like it was a breakup and it just needed to happen. It'd be like, you know It's felt like be, a It'd be like you go on a break with your girlfriend and, and you go out and you you know try all these things and then you're like, you know, I just couldn't find anything that was great, so <laughs> come on back, I guess. It I seemed just... like a long developing breakup to me because they yeah. were after the next two guard when they traded James Harden. Yeah. They were pursuing Bradley Beal. Yeah. There was talk of DeMar DeRozan. Mm-hmm. Robertson um, last year. Robertson last the, year. The draft. Now Houston. It, then it, they went out and got Lamb. Yeah. And, and Lamb, too. And Lamb. and Lamb was in that trade. No doubt. Uh, I don't see any way they bring him back. Yeah. Ramon Sessions, nah. Mm. Isaiah Thomas, probably no, probably uh, financially. Another restricted work. free agent. He's restricted. No yeah, uh, and and I would imagine it, with what Oklahoma City could offer, um, Sacramento would match that. I think in an instant. So I, I don't think. That's I have no likely. idea what Sacramento's doing though. Like they might be trying to get Rondo. They you know they're talking about Josh Smith. I have no idea what the Kings are doing. Yeah. They it's, just drafted Nick Stauskas. They they drafted Ben McLemore last McLemore. year. Like, who knows? You might be able to get him. I mean, and, I don't think he fits on the Thunder. Yeah, but. yeah. Well, I mean, he'd be like a little like microwave scorer off the bench. Yeah, I love Isaiah Thomas. Yeah, and I, I mean, know Scott Brooks loves Isaiah Thomas too. Yeah. Anyway, uh, there's not many more names left. Uh, PJ Tucker's uh, restricted. 
He's a good defender for two. So he's what twenty seven. Do you agree with me that Darnell looks like PJ Tucker? I think there's resemblance. Yes. Thank you. Yes. More than me and Jonas Valashunas. No. No way. <laughs> <laughs> yes way. <laughs> so PJ, yeah, again, uh, he, he, I went and looked at kind of his shot chart. You know, from the corners, he's really good, and he's you know six foot five, mm-hmm. and obviously can defend very well. Powerful defender, powerful defender, but he is a restricted free Friends agent. Friends with KD, another with one. KD, boom. Yes. So he's a restricted free agent, though. And so twins with Darnell. I mean, he could reunite. Yeah, I mean, so Darnell could suit up right occasionally, right? We would yeah. not know the difference. Oh, yeah. I, just want, I just want one of those game paychecks. That's all. Just one. <laughs> yeah, when they're playing the Kings or something, PJ Tiger can come sit next to me on press row, and Darnell can uh, play a little two guard. We would never know. Uh, we'd probably know mid first quarter. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! It's all right. All right, uh, there is like no names. How, how about Rodney Stuckey's kind of interesting? I think he's too probably too much. Oh boy, Rodney Stuckey. He's a little bit in that in that Jordan Crawford, Nick Young mode. Yeah, you goofy. Know, like I don't even know if he's goofy. I think he's just Lance Stevenson ish. You know, he those are the three yeah. guys I think of when I think of Rodney Stuckey. He gets buckets, but he's just got an attitude. Yeah, he's not the best fit from a chemistry standpoint. He needs the ball in his hands. He just. I don't think he's a great fit. I think you'll find more money elsewhere. Okay, last one. Mo Williams. Did he officially opt out? I Yes, I think he yeah, did. I mean, he, yeah. he had a player option, but yeah. I think, yeah. He was I think it all depends on what he's looking for. You know, obviously he's at the stage in his career. He's probably 31, 32. He wants to win right. more than likely. Uh, but he probably still wants to play. Um so I don't know if he's going to get much playing time with the Thunder. That's the I thing. wouldn't think. Yeah. Who? What's the, what's the ideal for the summer for the Thunder in your guys' eyes then? Because I'm out of free agents to ask. It's It seems to me like they're just going to let the process happen. You, we talked about Anthony Robertson potentially being starting two guard, Jeremy Lamb stepping up, you know, and, and getting yeah. more of a role than he had last season. You know, Derek Fisher and his 35 minutes a game are now coaching the Knicks. And, you know, at some point, maybe the, the natural process just takes over and, and we don't see anything substantial, despite what we're talking about. Yeah, here's the thing that is important to know they don't want to go out and get someone as a starting shooting guard who's going to play 30, 35 minutes. They want more minutes, and they need to have those minutes for Reggie Jackson and Jeremy Lamb. So if you go out and get someone, you're taking away minutes from the two guys that you have coming up who are showing that they're ready. Like yes. Reggie Jackson is ready. Yes. Jeremy Lamb, there's still some question marks, but he played well in the first half of the year, and he needs more minutes to develop that even more. So that's the tricky part for the Thunder. Who are you going to get that can play 20 to 25 minutes and then take up seat? So Reggie Jackson can play with Russell. In I, the know, I know a name. He was on the front page of our sports section. Oh, today. it all <laughs> comes back to Mike Miller. I think it's a perfect signing. I don't know if he wants to leave Memphis, but Memphis is kind of in their whole organizational thing with what happened uh, with Jaeger this off season. Does he want to go back to that? He obviously wants to win a title. He obviously thought about Oklahoma City last summer. He flirted here. I think at one point uh, didn't uh, Yahoo report the Thunder were a favorite for him. I think he is a perfect signing for, like you said, maybe you start Jeremy Lamb, he comes off the bench, he gets 20, 25 minutes. If he gets hot, he gets hot. Uh, he's going to have games where he hits six threes. He's going to have games where he misses a couple and doesn't play the rest of the game. I You'd think, start him or? I know. I think I'd probably start Lamb, bring Miller off the bench. And, you know, if, if defense is such an issue, play Robertson. I, I think he's great. And then this whole Powell thing's throwing me into a whirlwind today <laughs> if that's possible i think it's great I, I say just go get cj miles call it a summer that and that could be something as simple as that yeah get cj miles bring in a third string point guard whoever that might be yeah. lou grid now kirk heinrich is a guy that oh, i yeah, love yeah. oh yeah bring oh, yeah. in kirk heinrich and cj miles that's another guy yeah. I'm fine with your summer. Yeah, because we, we talk about this trade exception and, it, and like something that they have to use because it's so valuable. Trade exceptions expire all the time. Sometimes they're created, they're just so small that they're not really of any use, but there have been some large ones mm. that have set out there that if the right deal doesn't come along, you don't just spin it, you know, you don't let it burn a hole in your pocket, you let it expire. Yeah, that's, move that's, on. that's the thing that, you know, kind of caught me off guard. I was talking to Presti and some of those guys over with the Thunder. And they're saying, yeah, we might let it expire. And I'm thinking, 
This is the largest one they've ever had in Oklahoma City. Now, in they Oklahoma had the City. $9 million one in, <laughs> in Seattle. Seattle, the Kurt Thomas deal with Phoenix. but And they flipped that beautifully. I mean, yeah. it was amazing what they did with that thing. Serge Ibaka's here today because of that. Because but, of that. But, explain. But, explain to the listeners. Um, so, basically, they took on Kurt Thomas from Phoenix. Um, they got the trade exception. They got, what, they get two first-round picks? Yeah. So And, and that was because they signed and trade Richard, Richard Lewis to Orlando. Orlando said, we've got to drastically overpay Richard Lewis, and Seattle said, fine. He got buckets for Orlando. Yeah. He, he was perfect yeah. around Dwight. Anyways, that doesn't matter. Yeah. That's how they got the $9 million. Went to the finals, yeah. Yeah. So, so they did that to get the trade exception, yes. and then they, I guess what, they sent Kurt Thomas to Phoenix for two first-round picks. No, Phoenix came to Seattle. Phoenix was in a sal- – they, they were facing the luxury tax. They wanted to get out of it. Okay. So Sam kind of went to him. Almost to a, with a gun to the head, said, "Hey, we can bail you out of this, but you got to give us two first round picks for us to absorb Kurt Thomas." Okay, so he took on Kurt Thomas and the two first round picks. Yes, and traded like a second round pick to make it all yeah, work. Basically, nothing, yes. and then got all of that, and then he flipped Kurt Thomas for something else. I think with San Antonio. San Antonio, yeah. Um, and so one of those picks became, I think Cole Aldridge. I think one of the yeah, but one of them was Serge. But one of them was Serge. one was Serge. I forgot if I forgot if one of those picks was in the the Cole Aldridge deal or if it turned out to be Byron Mullins. I I, I forget how that one of those stiffs. One of those, yeah. They're not here anymore. Um, I think they're both free agents. Yeah, but <laughs> let's keep it that way. You know, okay. I mean, the, this franchise used they were at a different stage. That was in a rebuilding, we're collecting assets stage yeah. where they could do that, where they could absorb a salary and bring on draft picks. Right. They used their cap room. They were under the cap for a couple of years. They stayed well under, and that's how they got Eric Maynard by absorbing Matt Harpring's contract. Mm-hmm. Again, Utah was in the luxury tax. They were going nowhere, and Sam came along and said, I can bail you out of this, but we need Eric Maynard in exchange. And they also did that with New Orleans, with Morris Peterson. Yeah. In order to get the Cole Aldridge so. pick. Yeah. yeah, and it saved them you know, $13 million or more by mm-hmm. doing that. So th- they used that to their advantage to build the team up and get all the assets to get to where they are, but now they're in a different stage now to right. where they're not really in a position to absorb a bad contract to get an asset. Yeah. C.J. Miles, Kirk Heinrich, you drafted Mitch McGarry. Um, I think it's a quality summer. I mean, it's not like a home run, but that would be – Realistically, I'm not, I mean, I don't yeah. think Pal Gasol and all these other guys are realistic. So that would be my sort of ideal offseason. It's fun to talk about this stuff. Uh, the Gasol stuff is interesting. Man. It is interesting. But, I mean, just man, so many I mean, of these trade rumors and everything, man. It's not just... coming here for $5 million, though. Like, What do you make last year, like 19 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is a $14 million pay cut. I can almost guarantee wherever he goes, he's gonna, he wants to win it. Be a in contender to win a title next year, and that's there's really only six, seven teams where you can really say that. I could see, I could see him going somewhere like Memphis and trying to team with this bro, but they just got Randolph back, so that won't work. Yeah, I mean you, you want so this about is one of a few teams I think he actually wants to go to. Chicago, you know, if if they position themselves for Carmelo Anthony and that doesn't come through, would they look to get Pau Gasol yeah. and offer him more than Oklahoma City could? Things would have to play out right, and he'd have to be very willing in the process. But I don't think it's impossible. Yeah. What's Phoenix? What's Phoenix cap look like? They're they, they're wide open. They're lean. They got to get Bledsoe back, though, right? I mean, he, but Bledsoe, he won't even kick in to the following year. So, well, Bledsoe's a restricted free agent this summer. But his contract. When will his contract? Kick, his ex, his extension will that, kick in the following year, not. 14-15, no, I mean, but 15 His 16. rookie contract's expired, so he is yeah. he's a, he's restricted free agent now. The Thunder could sign him this you know, offseason. Right now, saying, if, the, if the Suns sign him mm-hmm. this summer, which I think they will, yeah. Yeah. his contract's not kicking in until 15-16. No, no, it kicks it in kicks now. In the extension will kick in this year? It kicks in now, yeah, because it's a brand-new contract. Okay. Yeah. So, in other words, he's a cap hold. Um, he's a guy that they clearly want back. But, yeah, they, they've positioned themselves. I, you know, there was a report that they're going to pursue LeBron and Carmelo to come play in, in, yeah, in yeah, Phoenix. Yeah, so they've they've That's, maneuvered themselves pretty well. Yeah, they got room. I guess, Speaking you know, of LeBron, Slater thinks he's staying in Miami. I think it makes more sense for him to go back to Cleveland. What are your thoughts on well, LeBron? It sounds, like it's, it sounds like all the pieces are moving towards him yeah, staying in Miami. The moment Udonis Haslam opted out, I said, yeah, okay, yeah. They're, they're all coming back you together. You figured it was a big – Oh yeah, it was a ha- but they, they, the they yeah. conspired to basically yeah stay Return. together. Uh, it's fascinating because clearly they have a pretty good knowledge of 
some of the uh, some of the workings of the salary cap. I don't think every player does clearly, but but they got agents that'll tell they them. They got agents, and so I think there's there's been a whole right. lot of a lot of burning spreadsheets in Miami trying to trying to make this thing work. But yeah, when Udonis Haslam said he was opting out, I said that they're coming back. Yeah, it's just a matter of who's getting what. See, to me, that guy was weight. You know, thirty two well, achy knees, both, really. and I'm like. You don't pass up forty two million dollars the last two years if you unless, don't, unless think, you know you're gonna be taken no, care of. I agree, I agree yeah. with that completely, but I think Haslam might have been even more ridiculous. I think he left like ten mil over two so years, he, something like that on he the He had table. one year and four point okay. seven left on his deal. Which is like he's not getting you know, some people no. will be like, I don't know if the we'll give Haslam the bet minimum. Right. Uh, right. so he's clearly going, and, going back. And, and this is just a way by him opting out. Miami's going to take care of him, so to speak. I mean, yeah. he'll probably get a three-year deal. Going to get his jersey retired, probably. Probably man. will. You know, he's he's a lifelong Heat. Um, he'll probably get. I'm thinking around six million. I've heard eight to nine thrown around, but in any event, he's going to sign for a new amount that will be lower than four point seven, which will open up a little bit of of, yeah. of room underneath the luxury tax for them, so they can make some other moves. Yeah, I think I think it's become clear. LeBron's. It's highly likely he goes back to Miami. Yeah, and you know. I, I, I know how Miami looked in the finals. You know, they're not only did Wade break down on them, but Chalmers broke down on them. And, yeah. Mentally, you know, it seemed. Yeah. And, I mean, they were just – I mean, they were the oldest team in the league last year. Yeah. It's 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 kind of weird to think about that with San Antonio, but they were the oldest team in the league. So, they're in the East. If you bring back the big three and add in a few younger role <laughs> players, yeah. they're oh. fine. Oh, boy. So, I just pulled up Hoops Hype. Check out the headline. What is it? Well, he may not. He may not LeBron have to. LeBron won't take pay cut. Okay, you, you don't. Then LeBron takes the max, and then you and then you work around with other guys. Wade takes the less. Bosh takes the less. Yeah, LeBron should not have to take a pay cut. Really? No, you're right about that. Yeah, uh, he deserves more than the max. But yeah, oh, no doubt. Net, One of the few guys. Sub headline: Nets lost 144 million dollars over the 13-14 season. Good. Jeez. Yeah. That's what happens when you poorly manage a team. That and that's people. That, it, it, I'm going to go off on a, on a Mayberry ahead, tangent please, here. No, please, and, and this, <laughs> we love and those. The, and this podcast with a solid tangent. <laughs> I, you know, you write about how the Thunder are smart with their money. I wrote an article recently for uh, for Daily Thunder that talked about how they signed Grant Jarrett, how they utilized Tulsa. Great article, by the way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, one of the first comments I saw come up, so Oklahoma City's cheap is what you're saying. It's like unless this team does everything in the most expensive way possible, they're cheap. And it just it just blows me away. Uh, there is a history here of teams that have paid tons of luxury tax. You look at the Knicks. You look at the Mavericks. They went nowhere. Now, the Mavericks had success, but they spent tons and tons of luxury tax money and they don't. They got one title out of it, two finals appearances. The Knicks went nowhere. The Nets last season, they're paying, what, $80 million, I think, in luxury tax? So spending the most guarantees you nothing, nothing at all. No doubt. It's going to be interesting. Or it might not be. <laughs> it's somewhere to lose. It might be Andre Robertson. <laughs> yeah. <It might> be. <laughs> Andre Robertson, Kirk Heinrich, and we're done. Yep. Pow. Oh, <laughs> how did we get him yeah. started on this? Yeah. Oh, we'll see. I, yeah. I, I got to go read this article. I, yeah, I got I I to go see too. this report. I honestly got to do a little bit more research on it, too. So that'll do it for this week's edition. I don't know the next time we'll talk to you. Maybe we, Summer we, League's coming up. We got a lot to talk about seeing how Josh Eustace looks. He's going to have a big, big Summer League. Uh, we'll talk to you uh, again sometime soon.